Good morning. In the face of growing concern about our ability to meet our long-term retiree pension obligations and growing frustration with our inability to directly negotiate and communicate with the Houston Firefighters Relief and Retirement Fund, uh, the City of Houston has filed a lawsuit this morning against the Houston Firefighters Relief and Retirement Fund. This is one of three pensions covering City of Houston uh, retirees. This lawsuit seeks to enable the City of Houston to have a similar relationship with the Houston Firefighters Relief and Retirement Fund as that we have with Houston uh, Police Officers Pension System and the Houston Municipal Employees Pension System. We're not taking action against those systems. We have a productive working relationship with those systems through meet and confer, but we do not have the ability to negotiate with the firefighters pension. We have asked for relief from our state legislature for the last two legislative sessions. We are trying to use every, every avenue possible to create a level playing field and to allow productive negotiations where Houstonians actually control what happens with the disposition of our tax dollars and our firefighter pension. State law that applies only to Houston is unreasonably restricting our ability to protect taxpayers and to keep our commitment to secure and sustainable benefits for firefighters. It's clear from the difficulties experienced by other cities that this is an issue that must be addressed. We have, had, we have to have the ability to negotiate these benefits and to be able to verify the financial health of Houston Firefighters Relief and Retirement Fund. We can't continue to wait on the state to act. We can't just kick the can down the road. We need to move this process forward. Through the meet and confer process with Houston Police Officers Retirement System and the Houston Municipal Employees Pension System, the city is already able to negotiate employee contributions, retirement ages, benefit levels, and we have done so successfully. In the past, these negotiations have resulted in agreements that have improved the city's ability to meet its long-term obligations with these two pension systems. Under existing state law, there is no similar process available for the firefighter pension system. Contrary to the laws that apply to every other city in the state of Texas, Houston is excluded from the important financial decisions about benefit levels and the contributions to support those benefits for its firefighter retirees. These decisions are made by boards controlled by current and retired firefighters who have an obvious conflict of interest. Several attempts to obtain a legislative cure have been unsuccessful, as I said earlier, and we believe it is time to move forward. Again, I repeat, the city's lawsuit does not seek to change any benefits being paid to current firefighter retirees, nor would it have any impact on the other two pension systems. This follows our expressly stated desire to have the ability to directly negotiate with the firefighter pension. Examples of, uh, an example of how the current system works, firefighters retiring with 30 years of service are currently eligible for an average initial monthly lifetime annuity of 94% of their average pre-retirement salary, plus an average estimated lump sum of approximately $850,000. The value of these average combined benefits, and we have to use averages because they refused to tell us what uh, the direct benefits are so that we could provide you with clearer information, but the value of the average combined benefits for these retirees is estimated to be $1.6 million which is equal to a lifetime monthly annuity of 197% of their average pre-retirement salary. 
that is unsustainable under any system. We're not, again, trying to change that today, although clearly it is our intention to negotiate changes in those benefits. Our desire it, through this lawsuit is to force the parties to the table so we can begin the process of negotiating. I'm happy to answer any questions, but uh, I'd ask you to direct legal questions to the city attorney who will be personally leading this effort. Mayor, could you or uh, city attorney address what the basis of the lawsuit, what exactly the lawsuit is asking? The, uh, <clears throat> the causes of action that the city uh, is bringing uh, are threefold in, in terms of uh, our argument that the statute itself is unconstitutional. First, it uh, represents an unconstitutional delegation of legislative authority to this separate board jumping over the city council, the city itself. There is no other statute in Texas that does that. Secondly, uh, it is what we call a special law. It applies only to the city of Houston. And under the Texas Constitution, the legislature doesn't have the authority to create a special law on pensions that specifically relates only to one city. Moreover, it also, if it's going to, to enact a special law, <clears throat> it has to have a rational basis. And our argument is that this statute, treating Houston so differently than any other city in the state, has no rational basis. And in addition to that, uh, there is a constitutional provision that was adopted in 1975, which limited the legislature's authority to uh, adopt municipal pensions. And that authority does not give them the ability to mandate that Houston participate in this system. So we believe that the statute is unconstitutional on that basis as well. And we ask the court to declare it to be unconstitutional and to enjoin the application of the existing statute. In addition, we also have a claim in the lawsuit that the board's expenditure of monies for lobbying against the city on these laws at the legislature is an unconstitutional expenditure of public funds. Uh, a question, Mr. Um, is it correct that the, the statute actually divides cities by population and that it's only Houston that reaches the population for its category. Correct. It's what we call a bracketed law, and that's why it's a special law. Every time the population of Houston increases, the legislature raises the bracket so that the statute only applies to the city. Um, could you also explain the differences between this, this lawsuit and the previous lawsuit that addressed the same, the same problem in a different way? Uh, it, it, it didn't address the same problem. What it addressed was the ability of the city to receive information from the, uh, from the pension board. As the mayor was stating, we, we have to operate in the blind. Uh, they keep much of the information uh, confidential, which we are entitled by law to see, but uh, they have denied us that opportunity. That was what that lawsuit was about. This is, this is a more fundamental as to the right of the city to participate in the process to determine contributions and plan design. And again, as the mayor stated, we are the only city in the state of Texas that is deprived of that opportunity. So I'm gonna add on to what he, what he said. Um, I worked for 20 years in the private sector. I also owned my own business for 10 years. And my employer and I knew exactly in our retirement systems uh, what everybody's potential retirement earnings were, you know, by employee, by name, we knew what our liabilities were. Uh, I can't get that information from the firefighters' pension system. And in fact, we said, I don't even need to know the firefighter's name or employee, employee number. Just call them firefighter one, firefighter two, firefighter three, and tell us what their uh, retirement obligation, the retirement obligations that the city would have for that particular firefighter, I can't get the information with the title stripped off. There's something wrong with the system where the person who pays the bills has no access to the information on those bills that they're paying. 
It's like receiving a total invoice and not being able to itemize it. Mayor, the, the union and, and the pension folks have long said the fire pension is the most well funded, especially when you compare it to the police and the uh, employee pension. So, you know, why fix something is broken? You know, we're not 90 some odd percent funded and we don't have any problems, so why mess with it? A, it, it is true that the firefighter pension is the best funded pension. It is untrue to say it is the healthiest pension. It has abuses in that pension system, including the fact that uh, pension benefits are applied to overtime, and that pension allows spiking. A pension that is unfair and unsustainable is not a healthy pension by any definition. It may be well-funded because we are required by the state of Texas, forced, in fact, uh, by the system that we're in, to pay the bills. It's not well funded because it is a healthy and sustainable system. Um, could you explain what spiking is for those who don't understand? It, it, it has to do with how you calculate a pension. And uh, we have previously in, in uh, the other pensions as well, you could base a retirement amount on the highest paycheck you received rather than an average of paychecks over a period of time. And in fact, there was a former fire, uh, police chief that uh, caused quite a stir when he got a, a significant pay raise with his last paycheck, and that set his pension retirement going forward. Uh, the firefighter's pension allows spiking, and it allows pensions to be based on overtime. So what happens in uh, near the end of a firefighter's career, a senior firefighter, where they're maximizing their income already? Surprisingly, they work a lot of overtime. Mayor, with both sides not coming forward without this suit, talk about what would happen down the line, like the risks involved in this. And um, you know, I just, overall, to some of our people at home that are watching, why is it so important that this is happening, that this is happening now? <clears throat> Right now, we pay about 10% of our general fund to our pension system. We pay, what is it, 38% of the general fund uh, for benefits. For salary. For salary. For salary. So uh, look at those. Look at those two. 10% to to retirees, 38% to salaries for actives. I don't begrudge a retiree the money that they have earned, but we have to change the system going forward because I am looking at increases of tens of millions of dollars across the pension systems, and every dollar that goes into that pension system, I can't use to pay active employees <coughs> today to do the work that needs to be done. I, since I can't, borrow money any longer for uh, street and drainage improvements, for example, uh, comes out of the general fund and uh, the uh, rebuild use of the drainage fee, but it's also supplemented by the general fund. There are going to be times, I know that folks are unhappy with conditions of the roads today. Well, I'm have to make choices. And right now, I cannot choose to change what I am sending to the firefighters retirement fund. Mayor, are you also concerned that, you know, that do you have any idea, are there or how many firefighters or what percentage, <coughs> any sort of numbers of how many firefighters who are retired and making more than they were, you know, on an average yearly salary, perhaps more than what they made pre retirement when they were actually working? Kelly? Yes. Kelly Dale, finance director for the city of Houston. So what we know is that um, for the fiscal year ending uh, June 30th, 2012, which was a typical year in the fund, there were 76 members who retired with at least 30 years of service. Those members were represented 84% of the retirements in 2012, so a vast majority of those retirements. And those members received the uh, annuity that the mayor said. Uh, if you assume that they all maximize their drop, which is a reasonable assumption, um, and that they get that big lump sum annuity or the big lump sum dollar that the uh, mayor mentioned, that that would translate into those 84% uh, receiving that 197% annuity. 
We don't know the total universe because, as, again, as the mayor said, we're shielded from a lot of the specifics, but that gives you a, a pretty typical year in the pension uh, fund for the firefighters. So do you believe that? And the percentage of uh, payroll that we're sending to the firefighters today? It's roughly 23% set to jump over 30% next year. So for every dollar uh, next year that we pay an active retiree, we'll be sending 30 cents of tax dollars to the pension system. So do you, do you think, is, well, is it fair to say the vast majority of retirees actually make more money than they did when they were an active member of the fire, fire department? It's a significant percent make more money than they did in retirement than they did working for the Houston Fire Department. We can't tell you exactly what percentage because they refuse to provide us that information. So generally, if you retire with 30 years of experience, you tend to retire making more money than you did active? That's a definite possibility. If they use the drop program, which you know we could get into the specifics of no, that. No, no. Um, Without the drop program, uh, it would be at 94%. That's correct. So you have to assume that a, a vast number of uh, firefighters make an intelligent, rational decision. How many, how many of you would be retiring at 94% of what you made? And would you keep working if you could continue making 94% of what you make today? Um, yes. Any viewer out there, if you could make 94% of what you take home today for the rest of your life, would you keep working? Uh, You're that, uh, in essence, is what's broken with the system? Yes. yes. Uh, one last question for the attorney. Could you give us the style of the case? The, uh, <clears throat> the city of Houston versus the Houston Firefighter Relief and Retirement Fund. Thank you. That's in the state. Yes, ma'am. May I got here a little late. Could you tell me exactly what I missed in what you said? I gave a great lead in. <laughs> now your colleagues are going to rag on you. I know. <laughs> this morning, the city of Houston filed suit against the Houston Firefighters Relief and Retirement Fund. Uh, we are not seeking to take anything away from retirees. We are not seeking a change in the system. Uh, we are seeking the ability to negotiate with the system. We have sought the same uh, ability to negotiate directly with the firefighters retirement system in the last two legislative sessions. We have not been able to achieve legislative relief. Now we're using the court system to, to try to bring us to the bargaining table. Now, once we are there, we will aggressively seek to amend the benefits going forward, but uh, today, we don't have any ability to affect uh, what our retirees on the far side receive, and uh, we believe it is an unhealthy and unsustainable system. Mayor, uh, right now, since the city does not meet its pension obligations to the other pensions, why should the fire department or the fire pension trust that the city would, would do so if, if given negotiations or facility? We, we meet our obligations to the other pension systems. We have negotiated what those payments are across the table, face to face, with those systems. But and they are we have used alternatives, such as uh, an equity interest in the police building or the police uh, retirement system, we're, uh, which we believe uh, in the long run will benefit both the city and the retirement system. So we are meeting all of our obligations. Now, as I stated earlier, there's no question that the uh, firefighters retirement system is the best funded system, but it is the least popular <coughs> of the three systems because the, the numbers are unsustainable. Um, Mayor, staffing's been an issue at the fire department for a while. Do you think if you got this under control that may have an impact positively on retaining people? Absolutely. I would, I would make a commitment in a heartbeat that any dollar we saved on the pension side, I would pump directly into the active side. I mean, that's, that's, an, that's an easy easy commitment to make because it is the, the best commitment for the long-term health of the city of Houston. I mean, as far as people retiring later, instead of taking the first opportunity to retire, you think you retain staff longer so that getting, getting the stations full of staff is less than what we really need to do is put more money into new firefighters and uh, the, the cadet classes because while I'd like to keep experienced uh, firefighter EMTs longer in the system, 
we are putting so much money on the back end that we're not bringing in cadet classes fast enough. And you have to have that, that steady inflow as well. Firefighting is a hard job. It wears on uh, the men and women who do it. And uh, it, when, they're, when they know it's time to go, they ought to have the right to, to, to leave and have a retirement with dignity. They don't have to, the right to break the bank. Um. Just briefly, has any member of the Houston legislative de delegation of either party agreed to file a bill to change the, the law? Not at this time. Uh, I am uh, pleased that in the last legislative session, uh, Representative Jim Murphy had a bill not directed toward Houston, but one that would have uh, prevented uh, Spiking and uh, use of overtime would have would have provided a platform uh, statewide. I'm correct about that, uh, and it uh, failed to pass the legislative session. That would have that would have taken out some of the worst, what we consider the the most inappropriate abuses in, in our system. Wouldn't have solved our problems. But I I think there will be more more interest. But we we can no longer wait. This is something that, for the long-term health of the city of Houston, and, and again, for the, the future of the city of Houston fire department, if, if for every uh, $3 we spend, one of those dollars goes to the retirees, that's a significant amount of money that I can't put into today's fire department. Any other questions? Do you have a target percentage? You said that as of now, 10% of the general fund goes to these retirement benefits. What is the percentage that you would see as? Uh, we think a fair percentage in any of these systems would be a uh, two to one match. Whatever, whatever a retiree puts in, the city of Houston would put in two times that amount. So in terms of the general fund, what about would that be? <coughs> Anybody else? All right, time to go downstairs and go to work. <laughs>